Today on Monkey Life, health checks on three rescued squirrel monkeys cause concern. Oh, I see. Oh, there's nothing off her. She's very, very bony. One, two, three. Plus, it's moving day for the Woolies. We've got everything crossed that everything's going to go OK, but obviously we'll take it totally at their pace. And baby orangutan Mimi takes her next step to becoming a full member of the nursery group. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. Jeremy's grooming her really lovely, so I think we're going to make good progress. The park provides a home for more than 250 monkeys and apes from 21 different species. It's a beautiful sunny morning at the park, and Lavar's woolly troop have a surprise waiting for them. The primate care team are putting out some tasty breakfast treats to provide extra enrichment for the group. We've made up some jelly cups for them, so it's got a little bit of jelly in the bottom uh, with a few extra treats as well inside. They have had this before. Uh, they don't always have it outside with their breakfast, so that's a little bit unusual for them. They don't mind the jelly, but to be honest, they do prefer the treats that are hidden inside the jelly, uh, and then they might go back and eat some of the jelly afterwards. Along with Lavar, there are four other members of the group, adult female Quapa and the three boisterous younger boys, Manny, Enzo and Bueno Junior. It's a really lively, really fun group full of lots of different characters. And here they come. It's the youngest, Bueno Junior, who's first to notice today's breakfast is slightly different. Spotting one of the paper cups and quickly ripping it open to get to the treats inside. Seven-year-old Enzo grabs a cup from the shelter before heading up high to tuck into the monkey nuts. Lavar's son, five-year-old Manny, takes on one of the more challenging options. Before joining Quapper in the shelter. But this feisty female won't be sharing any of her breakfast. Junior is keen to get to the bottom of the cup. And the tasty jelly that awaits. Manny is still on Quapper's tail, hoping she'll share yet another cup she's found. But she's having none of it. Turning her back on Manny, who gets the message? Lavar has also got in on the act. At 27, he's the oldest woolly in the park, but he's still an impressive, dominant male and a perfect role model for the three young boys in the group. Lavar's a really good dominant male, you know, he keeps his group nice and calm and settled. That gives them all, including the youngsters, the reassurance that they need. The females adore him and the youngsters all want to be with him and play with him. And all round, he's, he's just a very equally balanced dominant male. Having exhausted nearly all the peanuts and jelly, the group turn their attention to the rest of their breakfast. In the wild, woolly monkeys live in the trees of the Amazon basin, rarely coming down to the ground because of the danger of terrestrial predators. They use their impressive tails to suspend themselves from branches while reaching for food, or to drink water. Tasks like these are a perfect way of encouraging woolly's natural behavior. Laval's group is a very energetic group. They have loads of fun, you know. It's full of youngsters, so they're on the go all the time and they just want to play and, and have a good time. So um, it's a real fun group to watch and, and just see how they're getting on and developing. But what Lavar's gang don't know is that this was their last breakfast altogether. Tomorrow is moving day for the park's woolies and there's going to be a bit of a change around. Today, the park's animal hospital is gearing up for a busy morning. 
wildlife vet Sue Thornton is here to give some new arrivals a thorough health check. The three squirrel monkeys were found living in filthy conditions at a house in Somerset, following a police raid. As a result, there's no medical history for any of them. The first of the trio Sue is going to examine has been named Logan by the care team. It's thought the owner bought two of the monkeys as a breeding pair, with the intention of selling their offspring via the pet trade. He's quite significantly underweight. Logan is the larger of the males, and Sue is concerned about his overall appearance. This is an older animal. This, his teeth are not beautiful. He's skinny, he's very skinny. Um, his bones over his pelvis are very prominent, but he's got a reasonable muscle mass over his thighs, which when they're really in a bad way, they lose the muscle mass as well. Um, now, it could be that he's previously been really chunky and has now lost that, but he's not in bad condition and he's just lost the end of his tail. Logan heads back to his bedroom to recover. Next up is the smallest of the three, now called Lopez. He appears to have a major eye problem. Oh, yes, you're a little skinny thing, aren't you? Like Logan, he's underweight, but he's definitely much younger, probably no more than two years of age. He was found with a completely sunken right eye. The team aren't sure if it's causing him pain or needs surgical attention. They're hoping Sue will be able to provide some answers. He's had a fight, hasn't he, and just had it punk perforated. I think when we do the x-ray, we'll need to do it, maybe take a small one and just do a head. A head. So the eyeball is in there. Wow, it's, a, a com it's a sh ends. completely shrunken yeah. um, but it is eye. It's there. In there. Yeah. 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 An x-ray of Lopez's head doesn't show anything worrying. It doesn't look like there's any bone infection. I think it's an old injury. He's, the eye's collapsed, but he's, it's still there. Um, the only thing is the bloods may show that there's some active infection that we'll need to treat, but um, at the moment there's no evidence of that, so I think we'll just wait and see what the blood, blood results say. It's a waiting game to see if the eye will require any further treatment. But it's clear if there was a breeding pair in this trio, Lopez, on account of his young age, wasn't the breeding male. The only female of the three, Lucille, may well have been used to breed. When she's brought in, Sue is shocked by her appearance. Oh, I say. Oh, there's nothing of her. She's very, very bony. A close inspection of her teeth reveals more. She's quite little, actually, isn't she? Oh, actually, she's not young. I mean, her teeth are worn. Um, she's Maybe. actually lost... She's lost the tips of her um, canines, hasn't she? So, not necessarily the young breeding female that she was sold as. No, this is a very, very skinny animal. Yeah, not but good. This is an emaciated animal. Yeah. Lucille may not be ideal breeding age now, but a careful examination indicates she's had a number of babies in the past. That would not be a surprise okay, to me. Yeah, they're sort of long, aren't they? Yeah, like somebody's been hanging in front of them. It all points to Logan and Lucille as the breeding pair, and Lopez might even be their son. A quick session on the scales confirms just how underweight Lucille is. 6.4, so 640 grams. A female common squirrel monkey can weigh up to 1,000 grams, which means Lucille is worryingly underweight. But the biggest surprise comes when Sue finds something totally unexpected. Hey, you know what that is? That looks like a microchip. She's microchipped. A microchip is good news for the team. It means they might be able to track down where Lucille came from and gain more accurate information about her age. But sadly, it's the only positive news from her checkup. She's obviously gone through a lot. She's got problems with her bones. She's clearly had um, youngsters before. I think she's just absolutely worn out. But it also, she's lost her muscle mass. She's got very low body weight. She is emaciated, so the guys here have got a bit of work to do to get her back to full health. 
It's clear from the condition of all three primates their previous owner didn't care for them properly. But one thing is certain, they're now in the right hands and the dedicated team at Monkey World will do all they can to give them the life they desperately need and deserve. With almost half of the world's captive population of woolly monkeys living here at the park, constant monitoring of their care is paramount. Woolies are prone to stress and hypertension, so the care team do their best to ensure each group is harmonious and healthy. With this in mind, over the next two days, the park will undertake the biggest woolly move they've ever done. 14 of the 19 primates are swapping homes. It's a really tricky situation for us. There are so few left in the world in the captive population that we've set up three different groups here to try and deal with all of the babies that we have and managing all of our guys ourselves. So it means that every couple of years, really, we have to look and reassess and make sure that everybody's in the very best group and that they're getting along socially. So we've decided that it's time for another shifting around of characters and personalities, really, to see if we can find that perfect mix and balance. One major consideration is the number of males to females. Getting the balance right can be tricky. So today the team are going to concentrate on two of the bigger boys. Strapping male Paolo is going to move first. He's crossing the park to join Enzo, who's two years younger. But since they last lived together, Enzo's bulked up into a fully grown adult male. The rest of Paolo's group, Pakaya, Oriana and Claude, will move tomorrow. The team are unsure how the two males will react to meeting up again and want to give them as much time as possible without the distraction of other woolly monkeys around. Yeah, one, two, three. The first stage, getting Paolo into the travel box, has gone smoothly. The second part, introducing the two young adult males, could be a different ball game altogether. These two, Paolo and Enzo, um, have met each other previously, but it has been uh, several years since they've been together and they were a lot younger before then. Paolo's obviously done a lot of growing up since then. He's headed up his own group now as the dominant male. So a lot of factors have changed. So, you know, we've got everything crossed that everything's going to go OK, but obviously we'll take it totally at their pace and just keep a really close eye for the rest of the day. After a bit of hesitation, Paolo moves through the tunnel into the playroom and immediately heads up high. Enzo is waiting for him, a bit nervous at first, confronted by this big and impressive new housemate. Both boys are a bit wary, but it's Enzo who gains in confidence and starts to approach Paolo. Everything seems to be going OK so far. Paolo is still understandably quite wary um, and a little bit nervous, you know, it's completely new to him. Enzo's moving around quite comfortably. They have passed each other a few times, made some vocalisations to each other, but they've not had any proper full-on physical contact or anything yet. So, yeah, it's slow progress, but it doesn't seem to be going awful, so um, hopefully it's all going to just keep plodding along slowly in the right direction. There's no rush for them, so as long as they're happy just moving comfortably around each other, then that's good for me. While the introduction has been taking place, the team have taken the opportunity to move adult female Quapper over to Paolo's previous house. Also on the move is two-year-old Carlos, who's reunited with big sister Ava. Tomorrow, they're going to be joined by the park's oldest woolly monkey, Lavar. Day one of the big woolly move has gone well. Tomorrow, it's the turn of the remaining 11 to relocate and meet new housemates. Recently, Alison travelled to the Midlands to collect yet another marmoset victim of the British pet trade. Frank was bought by a well-meaning family who soon realised he needed better care than they could provide. They contacted Monkey World and when space became available, 
agreed he should be rehomed at the park. Mm, tasty. The team introduced him to a new housemate, Douglas. But having been brought up with people, Frank lacked any experience of being with other marmosets. His full-on attempt to introduce himself put his potential housemate on the defensive and resulted in Douglas making noisy, chuntering warnings, which were then followed by distressed sounds from Frank. Frank was very loud on the first day of intros, um, and that was actually like an alarm call, like a, a warning call. Um, and that was probably more to do with um, the shock of the whole situation, moving to a new place, being introduced to a marmoset probably for the first time in a very, very long time. Um, so it was all a little bit overwhelming for him. But two days later, the team tried again. And this time, Frank was much calmer. The two boys are now starting to enjoy each other's company and have taken the next big step, going into the outside enclosure together. At first, Frank was slightly reluctant. It did take him a long time. He didn't come out all the way till mid-afternoon. Um, and Dougie actually kept going back over the tunnel to check on him and coming back again. But yeah, he made it out into the enclosure. And every day since then, he's been straight out in the morning, um, loving the outside enclosure, absolutely loving the sunshine. He sunbathes constantly out here investigating, looking around, very interested in everything that's happening. So the public, the birds, um, the other animals that he can see, watching everything and, and taking everything in. He seems to be really enjoying it. Frank has slowly been learning how to behave as a marmoset. We've started hearing much nicer noises from the pair of them. Uh, when they go into bed, into the basket at night time, you hear nice little chirpy noises. So they're obviously very happy in there and grooming. After the noise and drama of their first encounter, it's been a surprising but welcome outcome. My theory about them squabbling on day one and then them not being able to make friends again, just completely wrong with these two. So, yeah, they're actually, they seem to take turn a corner about three days in um, and actually getting on really well. We haven't had any play sessions yet, but they have bedded down in the same basket on a couple of occasions, so absolutely brilliant news so far. It's been just over a month since the park welcomed young female orangutan, Mimi. Born at Moscow Zoo, Mimi was rejected by her mum at birth and for the first 20 months of her life had to be hand-reared and looked after by the staff there. Mimi struck up a bond with keeper Jarno straight away, but she's really flourished since being with others of her own kind and has transformed into a confident youngster living in an orangutan family group. Mimi has already bonded with fellow youngsters, Bulu Mata and Rika, who are just a little bit older, and Roro, one of the two adult females in the nursery. It's been fantastic inside, in the playroom. She's so comfortable climbing around all the way to the roof, having everything from the roof. So it's, I, I think it's time for her to explore even more. So yeah. Hopefully today she will just come out all the way on her own to enclosure and yeah, having fun out there. Come on, gorgeous girl. Come on, my beauty. Hey, look at you. Let's go have some milk. Come on, gorgeous girl. Keeper Jarno has previously taken Mimi into the outside enclosure but this time, she heads through the tunnels all by herself. The team want to be sure she's happy to head out on her own to explore the hoses and climbing apparatus. Then they can let some of the others join her. Mimi's doing really well. Um, she's progressing and, you know, we're teaching her all of the parts of, of, of her home, her new home, and how everything connects together. So it's great to see that she's moving in and out from the tunnel system into the enclosure. And she knows that's the area that she's used to and she feels comfortable. Yeah, taking it at her pace, but, but she's, she's coming on really well and, and she's settling in and um, yeah, I think she likes it here. Hey! Hey! hey. To give her reassurance and also to encourage Mimi to climb up, Jarno heads to one of the high platforms with lots of fruit for her as a reward, if she manages to reach him. Come here, look. Great girl. 
After checking things out, the inquisitive youngster sets off to join him. A little tentatively at first, but not for long. Come this way now. Come this way. Here. Mimi! She's really good. She's just exploring herself and checking everything, really. She seems like really, really confident. Now it's next step. I'm going to let Roro out to uh, join her so Roro can show her even more something, this facility that we have in the enclosure. Roro girl! Adult female Roro is a playful character and so far has been a great role model for all the boisterous youngsters in the nursery group. She was the first to meet Mimi and the team hope her presence outside will help Mimi gain even more confidence. And it does. In fact, she's like Roro's shadow, following her around in the enclosure wherever she goes. Watching and learning at the same time. It's exactly what Jana was hoping for. Oh, Mimi, she's so good. She's so comfortable, she's so confident, and she's so steady as well. And she can climb. There's no doubt about that. She can climb, no problem. Day one, hey, she can already manage so much, so that means she's brilliant. I'm so pleased. Next time on Monkey Life. The vets are called over concerns for the health of young chimp, Bart. Everything is confirming that we're dealing with diabetes um, and looks like type one diabetes in this case. Plus, ice lollies for the new squirrel monkey trio. And they've got this new treat licked.